All right, so now that we're on a recording, once again, my name is Sean. For the camera, say your name. Alex. And we're doing 20 laps in the Lamborghini Huracan. You've already been out there on track, and you know what to, uh, to do. You said you've, we talked quite a bit about the background and everything, so go ahead and change your mode from Strada to Sport by pulling the red button down one. You just kind of pull it. Yeah, good. With your foot on the brake, you can upshift once. Do you have any questions? Okay, go ahead, pull forward and then to the right. Does the engine still need to warm up? Because I don't realize it'll warm up pretty quick. It's, okay. it's ju it just as at the beginning. Go ahead, turn right. It, on your first lap, it doesn't really matter because you shouldn't be pushing on your first lap anyway. Mm -hmm. Just kind of getting a feel for it all, of course. Sure. And uh, you're going to go around here to the left hand side in between the two blue cones, like a gate. Good. Pull up to the last part, the last cone there, and then wait for a moment. I'm going to have you make one small adjustment to that mirror. So go ahead and bring that mirror into the right just a little bit. Bring the right? No, no, no. Oh, this mirror. Yeah, the same mirror you were on. Now push it like a joystick to the right. That's good. Yeah, a little more, a little more. That's good. Okay. Now you can just leave it in kind of the up and down position. Uh, or the neutral position, which you have. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you can head on to the racetrack now. It's all clear. And then shift up. Good, shift up. Good, and shift up. We're gonna make our way over to the left-hand side of the track. And then brake, down shift. Have you driven two cars already? Uh, just one. Oh, this is your second? Yeah, second car. Okay. You did 20 in the first one? Uh, okay. You did 20 laps in the first car? Yeah. Okay. GTR. Cool. Just kind of show me that racing line. We'll see where we're at, and I'll just kind of give you a little bit of more tailored, specific uh, instructions to help you out, okay? okay? Bring it into the left, good. You can probably already see just how much more responsive this car is. Good. Almost kind of hyper responsive to your inputs yeah. compared to that car. Brakes, downshift. We never use second gear here in this car.
to use more of the right side of the track on the entry of that corner. Okay. It'll allow you to carry more speed into it. start turning in about here and then bring it in closer to left hand side you're basically too far over to the right for too long okay. your entry is a little bit shallow and then your mid corner you almost kind of like diamond off the corner and I'd rather have you enter from a wider angle and have a, a, a softer angle into the corner I think it'll be a lot easier for you one of the dangerous cars compared to what you've already driven. car mid corner because of the angle that we're taking. Now brake, 
And then here we start turning in a little bit sharper. You see? Obviously, we lost traction through there. Uh, good hands, but we don't want to have those types of mistakes happen in this type of car. So on here, what I'd like to see you do is break, basically carry in a little bit higher speed into the corner by braking with less pressure. And that should, that should allow you to, to accelerate at a later time, which would be faster out of the corner braking. stall we're just going to kind of pull off to the side because um, okay. um, we're only halfway done mm -hmm. so we're just going to talk for a minute yeah. but uh, we're, we're not going to pull into our stall like okay. we're stopping we're going to go we're going to stay over on the left hand side so just uh, follow pit lane uh, go past these uh, three lights here so here's one two and then go to the um, actually just go to the second one here go past it a little bit a little bit a little bit a little bit and that's good stop Thank you. Stop. 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 Thank you. Put off the brake. Good. I'll let the car just sit here and idle. All right. So one thing that um, can help you, which is a very common mistake, is you tend to um, get onto the throttle too early. So you're using the throttle somewhat more as a clutch than proper timing. We know based on um, uh, race theory and race line theory that. Um, our brake pressure needs to be released as we turn in and our acceleration needs to start to happen um, at the apex out of the corner. So we brake towards the apex, we accelerate after the apex. You're braking to your turning point and then you're off the brake, but you're getting onto the throttle and then you're getting off of the throttle because then you get to the apex and you realize I'm still trying to rotate and that's causing the rear end to stand, feel loose on you or it's causing the front end to not turn the weight because in theory we're taking the weight from the front end when we accelerate, right? Mm -hmm. Or we do the opposite when we brake. So that what ends up happening is, is you have to make an adjustment with either your hands or your feet and or both. So what you end up doing is you come off of the gas, you correct the car mm -hmm. properly, you do, you're doing this right, but then you get back onto the throttle at your exit point. So the point when you should be getting onto the throttle is here you're not getting onto the throttle fully till here because you're doing an unnecessary throttle application here. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, so what I would like to try and see you do is no matter what you do and no matter what you feel comfortable with, with your braking zone to your turning point, don't accelerate till you get to your apex. Mm -hmm. And if this feels like you're too slow, I'd like you to make the adjustment within your brake pressure zone here 
rather than using the throttle like a uh, like a crutch. Okay. We don't want to take the weight away from the front two tires, which are your steering tires, until we're ready to exit the corner. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So I think that you'll able you'll be able to find that that good brake pressure. That's why turn ten, your brake pressure is very hard, and it's uh, uh, all the way from the beginning. So your timing is good, but we're slowing the car down so fast that you're able to turn in and you're able to get onto the throttle early. But what ends up happening is you're unable to turn in towards your apex, and then you feel you're fighting the front end, mm -hmm. right? You're fighting the front end, and then you have that little lift-off throttle, and then that front end weight transfers to the rear, and then the rear end feels loose on you, and now you're just kind of playing this balancing act, tilting back and forth. Instead, we'll wait longer, have a more solid and a productive exit off of the corner, and we'll try to just get comfortable sending the car into the corner with a little bit, not so much more speed, but more stability. Right, because when we're breaking the weight shifts to the front aggressively, when we come off of the brakes quickly, the weight shifts again very aggressively. It's very hard to make those catches, especially in a car that we might not be very, you know, super familiar with. Sometimes we can get to that point, but it's always going to be a much better uh, option to have, a, you know, a smoother brake release, allowing us to possibly carry more speed into the corner, but also setting us up for a uh, a proper exit. Okay, so apply this concept that we've just kind of gone over in turns 10 and turn three. That one on the, that one time when uh, the car got loose on us, we, oh, we, we carried the proper amount of speed. We carried in more speed in the corner, but you were so comfortable getting onto the throttle early, like a crutch to get in, then the car stepped out on you and then you were having to make the corrections. When instead I'd like you to actually throttle a little bit later while carrying a little bit more speed into the corner. And once again, your line through there is like this. I'd like to see it more like this. Mm -hmm. So this is your turn in point one, turn in point two. You're going all the way to the paint. I'd rather have the car already rotated like here, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Not before your first apex, but before your second green pylon apex, okay. if you or, or turn in point, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the first lap, we'll kind of go over it, and I'll show you exactly, and then and then we'll we'll go from there, okay? Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. You're good. You're good into gear. Right hand up. Okay, you can pull forward. I'll try to. Yeah, it's okay. Sounds, yeah, it's, it's probably difficult. <laughs> Slow down, please. Just go over to the left side. I don't know if there's anybody still on the racetrack. We need to make sure at first. Yeah. Okay, you can head on to the track now. a little bit of brake right about now and then our throttle doesn't come on till about here and then it starts to pick up it starts to ramp up right instead of a hump and then ramp up a second time it ramps up once and with a purpose here we use the outside we don't over slow the car we kind of let the speed scrub off a little bit more here and now we've already got a nice rotation and a nice line towards the inside making our life much easier here and now we continue with what we're doing, okay, through here. This is all looking pretty good. Just remember the bump right here is always going to throw the car a little bit um, a little bit off. So anticipate that. Yeah. It's good to have fast hands and uh, react quickly, uh, but it's better to anticipate that it's going to happen anyway. So maybe have the wheel a little bit more straight as you go through the bump. That way the car doesn't have such an uh, exaggerated reaction to the bump. Make sense? All right, let's go.
can pass left. Okay. Go ahead. Rotate more left. There you go. Right in the mid corner. The slowest part of the corner is where the most rotation happens. Continue, they're giving you the ride line. I just want you to see the outside like this. Okay. You're, di you're diamonding the corner. Turn in here. You see? So we turn in later. And then we have the straighter exit so we can accelerate more down here. We're going to give you the outside of the corner. So we won't be able to turn into apex, you're just going to stay to the outside. So just stay outside, stay outside. Good, and now you're set inside. So try to keep your throttle percentage between like 20 and 80. No less, no more. Right in, right in the middle. Never fully off, never. Break here, break here, break here. Through the S's back there, never fully off, never fully on. Right in the middle. Downshift. Now, now rotate. More. Now throttle. Open the wheel.
uh, you'll pass left. It's okay, cut the track. Just keep your speed right around 40 to 50. Okay. Uh, most importantly, just don't use the brakes. Okay. Yeah, just keep just keep doing what you're doing. Stay in the racing line, and you should be just fine. Good, no brakes. There you go. Good, good improvements. What do you think of the car? It's a bit heavy than R8, but it's kind of makes sense for like. Porsche 911, so you just uh, let the car rotate. Yeah, and more power too. More power makes the tail end a little bit happy. A little bit, a little bit different in this one too. Go ahead and exit track straight ahead. Pit lane. Pit lane. So what's the weight distribution? With this Anyone car? able to give me a lap count on the Huracan? Uh, I don't know. I could look it up. Go ahead, park here. Right here, right here, right here, right here. it out, pull up more, keep going, a little farther, keep going, keep going, okay. a little farther, that's good right there, thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think it just worked on, I, I mean, you, it was good because you applied what we had talked about, mm -hmm. and I think that that kind of made more sense, it just made the car a lot more approachable, a lot more kind of predictable, and that's really what you're trying to do. You know, a predictable car is really what makes a confident driver. No matter what they're driving, no matter where they're driving, if, you, if you're not sure, you're unsure of how something's going to react. And obviously that's part of it is, is uh, uh, just driving the car in general, kind of learning about, you know, what, how is it going to react to my inputs? What is it going to do when I, when I do this, when I do that, when I do these, uh, those types of things. Uh, so, um, you know, that's one side of it. But also kind of having the proper technique to build that base on and off of is um, is really key because if you're doing different things time to time or you're kind of asking the car to do the wrong thing and it's kind of uh, punishing you for those wrong things um, it's not oh this car is this way it's like no no, no if you change this uh, then you can actually extract what what you're envisioning uh, that you want the car to do right mm -hmm. cool um, any any questions you good yeah, you got the you got one more car right yeah 